On the FAR CPA exam, you need to understand bonds. When it comes to bonds, we need to know how to calculate the initial carrying value of the bond by applying present value factors, as well as the concept of the effective interest method. We're going to apply the effective interest method to amortize a bond discount, as well as a bond premium. Let's learn a little bit more about this. We're first going to look at a bond that's issued at par value. Now, I mentioned before, um, the way we calculate the present value of a bond is we use present value, right? Um, we discount the interest payments, and we, we discount the par value. I should probably write that as par instead of PV. We discount those to present, and that is the selling price of the bond, right? So generally, the, the way you calculate like the selling price or the fair value of something, one way to do that is by looking at the um, present value of expected future cash flows, right? Now, um, for purposes of the FAR exam, I'll tell you exactly what you need to know in terms of interest rates. You don't need to know how to use a time value money calculator. You don't need to know how to use Excel. The only thing you need to know how to do is pick the right present value factor. Now, what is a present value factor? Well, they basically give you a number that you multiply by the value to calculate the present value. There's a couple different forms this can come in, though. You can get a present value factor that is known as an annuity. It can also be an annuity due. <clears throat> um, sorry, I should say ordinary annuity. So you can get an ordinary annuity, an annuity due, or you can just have a, uh, <clears throat> we, we'll just call it, I don't know what the best word is, I guess like lump sum. Um, and an example of that would be this top one right here, present value of $1 at 6% for eight periods. It's it's basically, it's the discount rate that we use for payments that take place one time in the future, right? Um, so I'll just say um, for like one payment. Okay, so let's cover these. Let's first talk about annuities. What is an annuity? Well, an annuity is a set of payments. If you have a payment being made multiple times in the future, it's an annuity. For example, interest payments, right? With a bond, you have interest payments taking place over the life of the bond. In other words, you have recurring payments. That is the definition of an annuity. They are recurring payments over a period of time. Um, now, what is an ordinary annuity? Well, an ordinary annuity is a set of payments being made over time that take place at the end of the period. In other words, if you pay $10,000 per year for five years and you make those payments at the end of the year, it's an annuity because you're making multiple payments of the same amount um, and it would be considered an ordinary annuity because those payments are coming at the end of each year. An annuity due is when the payments are at the beginning. So if you make payments of $10,000 on January 1st of each year for five years, that's an annuity due because the payment comes at the beginning of the year. So just to kind of summarize, annuities, that's for recurring payments or payments being made multiple times. Ordinary is when the payments are at the end of the period. Annuity due is when the payments are at the beginning. So anytime you're discounting the interest on a bond, you always want to use an annuity and you want to pay attention to when the interest is being paid. Now, 99% of the time, it's going to be an ordinary annuity because it doesn't make sense to pay out interest before it's been accrued, right? And with an annuity due, payments are coming at the beginning of the period. So you would be making interest payments on interest that hasn't been incurred or accrued for yet. So 
your first choice should always be an ordinary annuity present value factor um, for the interest. And then for discounting the par value, you always want to use the present value factor for just um, like $1 at whatever the rate is, right? Now, the second thing to be aware of is what rate do I use to discount? As we mentioned, we have the coupon rate and we have the market rate. Now, the coupon rate has some other names. Remember, coupon rate, nominal rate, um, stated rate, those all mean the same thing. But essentially, those are the rates of interest that are being paid on the bond, right? So coupon, nominal, um, and stated, those are all the same thing. It's the rate of interest that the bond pays. When you discount to present value, you have to use the market rate. The, the purpose of the coupon rate is to calculate the amount of interest being paid, but you always discount using the market rate. So when you pick your present value factors, you want to pick the present value factor that goes off of the market rate, not the coupon rate. And then you want to use the annuity present value factor for the interest payments. Um, the final thing I'll say is if payments are made in a, in um, you know, in a, oh, oh, let what's the best way to put this? If, if payments are being made like semi-annually or quarterly, in other words, the payments are not on an annual basis, um, you, you need to adjust a couple things. So for your coupon rate and your market rate, um, to get to a semi-annual rate, you divide by two. To get a quarterly rate, you divide by four. And to get a monthly, you divide by 12. Are you struggling to understand some of those really challenging FAR CPA exam concepts? Well, you're not alone, and we're here to help. So sign up for our free FAR CPA exam boot camp with the link below. It's a mouthful. So essentially, you need to convert your coupon rate and your market rate to match the frequency of payments being made. Um, I, I think the best way is just to kind of like look at this question and then I'll point it out. So let's take a look at this. Um, it says Equal Value Corp issues a 12% $1 million bond. So the $1 million, this is the face amount or the par value. I'll just call it the par value because that's the most common. So this is the, the amount that's paid back at the end of the life of the bond. So in four years, we pay a $1 million lump sum back. Now we're paying 12% interest on this. That's our coupon rate. So 12% interest on the 1 million, <clears throat> that comes out to be, what, 120,000? That's our interest payment. So we use the coupon rate in conjunction with the par value to calculate our interest payment. Um, <clears throat> now, the, the interest is being paid semi-annually. So technically, this would be 60,000 each period. In other words, our semi-annual coupon rate would be 6%, right? And if you took 1 million times 6%, you would get the 60,000. So our semi-annual coupon rate is 6%. Our semi-annual interest payment is, is 60,000. Um, and then they tell us that the market rate is 12%. We need to divide that by two to convert it into a semi-annual rate of 6%. Now, you'll notice that our coupon rate and our market rate are the same. In other words, our bond pays interest at the rate that the market does. So this means that the selling price of our bond is going to match the par value. So the way we calculate the present value is we take the 1 million, we multiply this by the present value of $1 at 6%, which is based off of the market rate. The coupon rate just happens to also be that, but we always go with the market rate. <clears throat> and we multiply that by 0.62741. <clears throat> and that will give us a present value of 627,400. So that's the present value of our par value. We then take our interest payment of, of 120. Remember, we divide it by two. So it's $60,000 semi-annual payments. And we multiply this by our semi-annual annuity factor of 6.210. And that comes out to be 
So that is the present value of our interest payments. We then will add these two together and that will equal 1 million. And this is the selling price or the issuance price of the bond. Now notice it matches the par value. Right, these two are the same. And the reason they're the same is because our market rate of 6% matches our coupon rate. When those two are not equal, these two will not be equal. Any questions about that? What what are you confused on? Um, and we'll work some questions, so don't worry. Um, <clears throat> the biggest thing that you need to remember is you use the market rate for discounting and you use the coupon rate for calculating interest. That's the biggest thing. Um, now, let's go ahead and... Um, I don't think there's actually a table for this problem. Um, so if that makes sense, then let's move on to discounts. When to use the present value of one versus the present value of one at annuity. You only use the present value of one at annuity for the interest payments. An annuity refers to a payment that's being made multiple times, right? So if it's a recurring payment, it's an annuity. Because we're making interest payments over four years, semi-annually, right? We have a recurring payment. So to calculate the present value of our interest payments, we use the annuity factor. Um, to calculate the, the present value of the face amount or the par value of 1 million, that's when we use the present value of $1 at 6%. So we only use the annuity for discounting the interest. Otherwise, we just use the other normal present value rate to calculate the present value of the face amount or the par value. Does that make sense? Okay, let's take a look at a discount because this one actually has like an amortization table that we can take a look at. Um, okay, so in this problem, we have a par value of 1 million. Our coupon rate is 12% and the market rate is 14% and um, the period of time is four years. Now, payments are being made semi-annually, so we need to convert some things. If we make payments semi-annually, then that means our semi-annual coupon rate is 6%. And our semi-annual market rate is 7%. And the total payment periods is going to be eight, right? If I make payments twice a year over four years, that's eight periods of payment. Now to calculate my interest payments, I take my $1 million par value and I multiply by my semi-annual coupon rate of 6%. So my interest payment is 60,000. Now, to calculate the present value, I take the 60,000 and I multiply this by the present value annuity factor based off of my market rate. Now, in this problem, it's easy because they give you the present value factors at the market rate. But on the exam, that's not going to be the case. On the exam, they are going to give you a lot of present value factors and you have to be able to work through them. Um, so. Because we're talking about an interest payment, we only want to look at annuities. And it's going to be an, an ordinary annuity, right? Because the interest is being paid out at the end of the period, the end of each semi-annual period, um, since we aren't going to pay interest if it hasn't been incurred, right? Um, 
We also want to make sure that we pick the present value factor based off of 7%, which is our market semi-annual rate. If they gave us a present value annuity factor at 14%, we cannot use that because that annuity factor is not based off of semi-annual periods, right? So even if the annuity factor is based off of the market rate, if it's not based off of the semi-annual market rate, it's still wrong, right? Now, if they gave us a present value factor that was based off of 6%, that would be wrong because we don't use the coupon rate for discounting purposes. Um, and really the way they calculate these, these present value factors is they plug it they plug the discount rate or the interest rate into a formula and they spit that out. So a present value factor based off of 6% very much is incorporating that into the present value factor. Um, and remember for the, the coupon rate, that only influences the payment, the interest payment. It doesn't influence any present value stuff that we do. Okay, so we take the 60,000 and we multiply this by the present value of an annuity. So that'd be 5.9713. And that would come out to be 580, uh, or sorry, 358,278. So that's the present value of our interest payments. If we take the 1 million and discount this by the present value of $1 at 7%, that would give us 582.10. Now, if we add these together, that will give us our issuance price, and that will come out to be 940.288. So this is how much we're selling the bond for. So we're selling the bond for 940.288, but we have to pay back a million dollars at the end of the life of the bond plus interest. Why is this the case? Well, it's because our bond only pays 12%, but other bonds pay 14%. So essentially, we have to drop the issuance price in order to make our bond more competitive. Now, they're going to ask you questions about journal entries. That's basically a guarantee. So let's, let's talk about how we can set up a table here. 